Welcome into this special edition of Turp Talk Live and Super Live. Today, I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. And live from Italy, following the Maryland basketball team around, is one big dog himself. It's Rick Jacklich. Rick, where are you now? I'm sitting on the deck of this beautiful Villa Rosa overlooking uh, Lake Como behind me. Beautiful day out in the boat today. Great night last night with the coaching staff. We had dinner here with all the coaches and the wives. Really fun time here in Italy. That, that sounds great. From the written reports and from talking to you, the team looks spectacular. What did you see in the basketball court? Well, the most improved player, I think, by far has been Calum. You know, that seven-footer inside, uh, he's so much more confident, so much smoother than he was last year. That's going to be big help. Uh, you're you know, talking now. about Callum Swinton Rogers. Is that right, Mason? Yeah. That's Absolutely. right. The big Canadian. Absolutely. But the thing that really stands out, the three freshmen are just phenomenal. They fit in so well with the team. They're accepted by the, the seniors and the juniors on that team. And the other thing that really, the player that really stood out to me was Jordan Geronimo. Amazing, amazing leaper. You know, here's the Indiana transfer. You're like, hey, what do we get with this kid? You watch him. He's the most exciting player on the floor, more than than any of the other kids at all. He is the exciting player on that team. That, that is news to me because you, you're right. It's somebody that came in probably a little under the radar as an in-conference transfer. And, uh, boy, it sounds like complete upside. Mason, what do you have? Yeah, Rick, um, question about the trip and just what the guys have been taking it in. How, how have you noticed them, you know, taking on the experience once in a lifetime trip to Italy with their teammates? How, how are they coming together? Or do they seem like they're enjoying it? What, what's the general vibe around the trip? Uh, great question, Mason. But, you know, the thing that stood out to me is my wife and I were coming back from dinner in Venice. And it's almost 10 o'clock at night. We're walking in the door of the hotel and coming out to head onto the water taxi, head across to have a good time, juju. <laughs> and Jameer Young, and they had in tow with them, uh, they had two of the freshmen, Jamie Kaiser was with them, and then uh, Deshaun, uh, who's going to be really, really spectacular, the kid out of Paul the Sixth. And it was just so cool to see the senior members of that team have the freshmen in tow. You're like, this is a really tight-knit team. And you've seen that all through Italy, from Rome to Florence to Venice to Lake Como. Uh, they're loving life, and it's really great to see how they've bonded. That's the whole point of the trip, right? Don't get anybody injured. Play a couple. See if the kids can bond. It's a huge success. So I'm sure you heard some things you can't repeat, but from what you can tell us, uh, how do the coaches view the, the trip to Italy? And if you can add any color, if anybody said anything about the changes to the Big Ten that came up while you were on that trip. Well, I'm not going to quote any of the coaches at all, and you have to talk to them about their opinions. But, I mean, I can tell you personally, the change of the Big Ten, uh, I'm not a big fan of Oregon and Washington coming into the conference. I don't know what additional thing you gain from those two schools that you didn't have with USC and UCLA, right? You've expanded the conference to the West Coast with those two schools. They get a full share coming up. Uh the two other Western school changes everything as to how these teams will travel West. Uh, and I think you're going to see in the future, you're going to see Maryland flying out with Rutgers in the same plane, one plane USC, one plane UCLA. Uh, but I don't see the additional benefit that you get beyond the shares that Oregon and Washington will get. So I'm not quoting anybody else. This is my personal opinion. Uh, I don't see any additional gain for the big 10 whatsoever. Okay. Uh Back to Mason. Uh, what do you think? Well, I, you know, I can ask Rick here since he's here. Uh, how do you think somebody like Kevin Willard in the super competitive nature that he has takes to going to Italy to play the three games? You know, he said it's all about the practices, but you had to be happy winning those games. Well, I mean, Rick's there, so I'll let him chime in on it. But I think Rick already said it. It's about building the team up, you know, giving them an experience. It's a reason to come to a school like a Maryland that has an opportunity to take you on a trip like that. It's, and then, you know, you think the first piece of content that came out from the team, which was Jameer Young, um, just, you know, kind of celebrating the moment of being there says it all. It's, it's all 
just experience. It's why they, these guys don't get to study abroad. They don't get to take those trips. They don't have those opportunities. So when you give them that and they get to play basketball and they get a once in a lifetime memory, that that's one of those things you don't really see. Student athletes don't get those chances. You know, it's interesting when you talk about Kevin being so ultra competitive and he is, but on this trip, he sat back during the games and the first game, David Cox coached the team. The second game, it was Greg Manning. The third game, it was Mike Jones coached. And Kevin sat in a chair with his arms folded back on the baseline and just kind of watched how his brand-new staff handled the team. Remember, they lost three coaches from last year's staff that all took uh, head coaching jobs across the country. And so he really has, even though Greg's been there forever and David Cox was there last year, it really is a brand-new staff. So to see him sit back, and kind of observe how his assistant's work was interesting to see. Excellent. Excellent. And I take it he was as funny as ever in person? You know, he's he's got that New York edge. He loves giving a hard time to people. Uh, we had dinner with him at the Cipriani Hotel, and uh, it was a tasting menu, and everything was about presentation. They brought out, I called it the shrub. It was a glass full of nothing but flowers, it seemed like, with kombucha in it and a straw. And I have a picture of Kevin looking so guilty because he knew I was trying to take a picture of him drinking a shrub. <laughs> so, it was a fun night, really a fun night. And on that, I think we will let you get back to having a good time in Italy. Thank you so much for checking in with Turp Talk. And we'll, when you get back, we have to talk about football coming up Absolutely. in a couple of weeks. Love to do that. And I'm telling all the Turp fans watching this, you guys throughout this season coming up, the Villanova game, the, the UCLA game, you're going to be yelling, hey, hey, ho, ho, go, go, Geronimo. Very, very uh-huh. spectacular players. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. Have a great Thanks. time. Yeah. See you go soon. Turf. Happy travels.